Hey everybody, it's Dr. Dickinson. Today I'm gonna to be talking about making math connections with virtual manipulatives. I wanna remind you that manipulatives are tools that students use while they're doing the math to make sense out of math and to help them illustrate and think about really abstract math concepts. And for kiddos, everything can be abstract, even just counting on counting back, you know, counting and adding two digit numbers. Those are abstract concepts, so it's really based on our students' funds of knowledge and what they bring into that classroom. And we don't know unless we ask them, right? So we wanna always begin our instruction by asking really good questions. So you might have some physical manipulatives like your base 10 blocks. You could see how this manipulative represents 10. It also has a length that's equal to 10, especially if we compare that to a one, which is much shorter. So good manipulatives represent the quantity that we're representing. Now, if I had a hundreds block here, you would see that it actually looks like 10 tens. And that shows our students visually, as well as having them touch and move those manipulatives to make sense out of what these manipulatives represent. These are good examples of manipulatives we wanna use in the classroom. I also love things like, um, playing cards because the playing cards have a pictorial representation of the value so you take a number like two and you see it has two um shapes to represent that okay or seven and these are great things we can even just do some flash and have our kids maybe just cover up the numbers and have them subitize by saying how many are here how many are here and so getting our students to really um, begin to use math manipulatives is critical, especially in our early elementary grades. There's actually been a ton of research on early math learning out of the Montessori uh, work in, by, her, by Marie Montessori and how this process of physically counting and constructing helps students develop learning. It helps them develop things like problem solving and reasoning. So you always wanna get these physical objects in our students' hands. If you have Unifix cubes, these are great, but maybe you're teaching online, or maybe your students might not have access to tools, or maybe you're teaching in a hybrid class, but they can't touch objects because of whatever regulations you have. So getting them to also see those same exact physical tools virtually is just as important. Um, and things like an abacus can be super helpful for all the skills like counting and subitizing and decomposing a number. So you have tens and different ways that you can make combinations of tens. Also, you can do things like subtraction. So you have 30, five, and you wanna take away eight. And you can have your students count back eight. Without even having to regroup. So now they see I have one ten, two tens, and seven ones, okay? So we're also reinforcing concepts like place value. We haven't even brought in a place value chart or any numerical representations. It's that explore, exploratory phase that really helps students develop a conceptual understanding, and that's why manipulatives are so important. But we certainly wanna build in other things like those visual virtual manipulatives as well as the symbolic representation. Yes, so we can build the number 26 on our abacus, but then we can have our students make a, a representation and put it into symbolic form. So all of these tools are super useful and they're ways that we can start thinking about designing instruction for all of our learners. And we can start thinking about virtual manipulatives that we wanna explore. So. We talked about those concrete tools, representational tools, digital manipulatives. They have some aspects of being concrete because we um, can move them, but obviously we can't physically touch them. We can see them on the computer. So they also have that representational piece. Remember that students need to have those experiences because when they see things like symbols, they don't have an understanding for that, but they can build understanding of what concrete and what uh, representations are by being able to explore and play and make sense out of what they're doing. So again, all these ways are critical to help students build understanding of math, to build understanding of 
numeracy, and early number skills. We want to also build in this idea of when we are designing instruction with math, that we're harnessing those five representations of mathematical ideas. This is a critical piece of the sense making that happens. You might think about, oh, universal design for learning, and I want to make sure that all of my students' learning modalities are met. But when we think about designing math tasks, we want to have opportunities for our students to physically touch, right? Let's physically touch. We want to have opportunities for have that visual representation, which virtual manipulatives do so well. We can also have them make those drawings. So even if we are just displaying virtual manipulatives on the screen, our students can be using the whiteboard and they can be showing us those drawings that they're making. And that's part of the learning process. We can then have them put it in symbolic form, okay? So I have two tens and six ones. So two tens, which is 20, plus six ones equals 26. That's the symbolic form. Verbal is providing opportunities for our students to explain. Our students explain, not us explain, have the students explain. And that's why they need those experiences like the kinesthetic, like the visual. It's going to help aid them in explaining, okay? We'll help our students get cues and prompts to do those types of things like making those explanations. And it's critical for all our learners, but especially our students who are English language learners, those visuals provide that um, understanding. It also decreases the language demand that we sometimes don't think about or consider when we're doing math instruction. Some people might say, oh, well, math is universal. You don't really need to worry about language. But if your, if your instruction is just verbal, just talking, then it's not going to allow for any sense making to happen. In addition, there's just been a ton of research, um, especially in this area about the value of virtual manipulatives, support students with uh, learning differences. It's been found to have a positive influence in not just students' achievement, but their attitudes, their beliefs about themselves as mathematicians. And certainly, there's evidence showing that it allows the students to model, observe, manipulate, and internalize abstract math concepts. So it leads to all of those key things. And most importantly, when the students have an opportunity to use either virtual or physical manipulatives, they're going to engage with the math. And we all know that engagement is what leads to learning. So let's make it happen. And when we do that, we can have our students make those representations and they can provide a context. They can tell a story about the number 26. So that's what contextualized learning is as well. We can provide them with real world problems as well to give them that context of those concepts we're learning about. Woo, lots of talking. We, I've made a case for you guys about why you should be using manipulatives. And with virtual manipulatives, there's just so much more, okay? There's no cleanup. So that's a win-win for me. Um, there's also just a wonderful opportunity for our students. It can provide language aids. It can provide them with a tool to record their thinking, to type, to attend to precision. Um, and it allows students to really, as we showed in that graphic, look at this. You can't decompose um, this base 10, but you can do it virtually. There's, there's digital tools that will break apart hundreds into 10 tens and we'll break apart a base 10 into 10 ones so the magic can happen virtually too which is really cool all right so what are some tips for making math manipulatives work in your classroom well whatever you're using please do not use toys because these are just huge distractions and they don't allow students to understand the concepts that we're teaching okay so stick with tools that are very simple they are um, consistent. Something like a base 10 block can be used across domains. It can be used for numbers and operations. It can be used for number sense. It can be used for teaching fractions and decimals. This can be a 10th and this can be a one. Whoa, and I've already had some experiences with this in my early elementary. And now when I get to upper elementary and middle school, I can still use these physical manipulatives to understand more abstract math concepts, okay? Make sure there's that exploration that we talked about and opportunities to discover. And how we do this as teachers is how we design our tasks. We wanna make sure that they're open-ended, they allow our students to make sense of the math, 
to use tools strategically, right? Keep it simple and then provide things, provide like a graphic organizer for students to transfer that, to record their thinking, provide opportunities like a worksheet or a textbook where they can make that connection from that physical to the text. And that's gonna support them in transferring the learning. Um, and then again, just make sure it's aligned with your program and your goals and they see those connections across the domain. So it's something like pattern blocks, like you see at the bottom of the screen, we can use pattern blocks for patterns, we can use it for geometry, we can use it for fractions and so on and so forth. So a lot of connections that we can make with our physical manipulatives and with our digital tools. And the next series of videos, I'm gonna be exploring virtual manipulatives across the math domains and starting with how you can teach it developmentally with your early learners and then moving into upper elementary and middle school. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more videos on teaching math with virtual manipulatives.